Hello friends, today we're going to make heart macarons. This heart macarons are filled with brownie and cream cheese frosting. They're super fun to make and perfect for Valentine's Day. There is a free template on my blog that you can download, print and place under your mat so you can pipe your hearts. If you like today's video, give it a like and also subscribe to my channel, I post new videos every week. Begin by sifting together the powdered sugar and the almond flour and then set it aside. Place a bowl over a pan with barely simmering water, add sugar and egg white powder. Egg white powder is completely optional, you don't have to use it if you don't have it. And you don't have to change anything else in the recipe in case you can't find it. Then add egg whites and whisk the mixture until the sugar is completely melted. It should take a couple of minutes. You can test by touching the mixture between your fingers and if you don't feel any sugar granules, you can remove it from the heat. Transfer the syrup to the bowl of a stand mixer. With the whisk attachment, begin by whisking on low and then gradually increase the speed to medium and then to medium high. Then whip the meringue until stiff peaks are formed. The peaks should be shooting straight up and not bending down to the side. Here I'm going to transfer the meringue to this bowl so I can show you the macaronage process a little bit better. Pour the sifted powdered sugar and almond flour into the stiff meringue. And begin folding with a spatula. Since I'm making two color batter, as soon as you see no more dry ingredients in the meringue, stop stirring. And at this point, divide the batter between two different bowls. Work with one bowl at a time, leaving the other one covered meanwhile. To the first bowl, we're going to add some blue food coloring. I've used royal blue. Fold the batter until the perfect consistency is achieved. The batter should be flowing off the spatula slowly and effortlessly. And you should be able to pick up some batter with a spatula and draw a few figure eights with the batter that's flowing off the spatula without having a breakup. Once this batter is ready to go, we're going to transfer it to a piping bag, fit it with a round tip. I'm using a Wilton 12 piping tip. Now we're going to set this batter aside. Let's work with the second batter. I've added some purple food coloring to this batter. After adding the food coloring, stir again until the perfect consistency is achieved. Once the batter is flowing off the spatula slowly and effortlessly, it's time to transfer it to a piping bag. I also like to secure the top with a tie to make sure that the batter doesn't dry out and also to make sure that the batter doesn't escape from the top. To pipe the hearts, place the piping bag at a 90 degree angle at the top left side of the heart template. Apply pressure as you slide the bag down to the center in a diagonal. Then place the piping bag on the top right corner of the heart and apply gentle pressure as you slide the bag down to the center in a diagonal. After piping a few hearts, use a toothpick to help spread the batter to the edges of the heart template. It's important to just pipe a few hearts and do this so the batter doesn't get too dry before you get a chance to use a toothpick to spread the batter out to the edges of the heart template. And also, as you're piping, tap the trays against the counter or against the palm of your hand to release any air bubbles and to help smooth out the batter. And it's really important to pay attention to the bottom of the heart. You're gonna wanna make sure that you form a point because as the macarons bake, they will round up a little bit. And if you don't make a defined point at the bottom, the heart is going to have a rounded bottom.
ones. Now we're going to pipe the blue macarons and we're going to do the same thing that we did before. Just pipe a few hearts at a time. Make sure to use a toothpick every now and then to spread the batter out to the edges of the template. And tap the trays every so often to help the batter smooth out. Remember to remove the templates from the bottom of the silicone mats before you bake the macarons. It's easier to remove the templates while the macarons are still not dry. Let the macarons dry for 20 to 40 minutes depending on how humid the day is, how much food coloring you've used, on the consistency of your batter. You will know that the macarons are ready to be baked when you can touch the surface of a macaron and it doesn't stick to your finger. I bake my macarons at a 325 Fahrenheit oven. Your oven might be different, so you might need a different temperature. After five minutes baking, I rotate my tray. Again, you might not have to do this. I have to do this, otherwise my macarons will come out lopsided. Bake each tray of macarons for about 15 to 20 minutes. You will know that the macarons are baked when you try to move a macaron and it's not gonna feel jiggly. That is when you can remove it from the oven and bake the other tray. Let the macarons cool down completely before proceeding with the filling. While the macarons cool down and while the other batch bakes, we're going to make the brownies. Melt the butter and chocolate chips or chopped chocolate together in a bowl. You can use the microwave by microwaving for 30 seconds at a time, stirring in between until the chocolate and the butter have completely melted together. Add brown and granulated sugar to the chocolate butter mixture and whisk until incorporated. Add the egg and mix to combine. Then add the vanilla and mix. Now we're going to add flour, cocoa powder and salt to the bowl. I like to sift them right into the bowl. Whisk until the ingredients have incorporated together. Pour the batter on the bottom of an eight by eight inch cake pan. Make sure to spread it evenly. It's going to be a very thin layer, but we want this brownie to be very thin so we can fill our macarons with it. If it's too thick, it's not going to work out nicely for the filling. You're just gonna bake the brownies for about 10 minutes. 
It's really not going to take that long to bake the brownies since they're so thin. Let the brownies cool down before cutting. Here we're going to cut some heart shapes so we can place them in the middle of our macaron shells. You can also cut round shapes. And I realized that the shapes that I cut were way too big for my macarons. So I went back and I made them a little bit smaller later. Anyway, now that we have that ready, we're going to make the cream cheese frosting. Whip the cream cheese and butter with an electric mixer for about two minutes. Then add the powdered sugar and beat the mixture for a couple of minutes until incorporated and until very fluffy. Then add some vanilla extract at the end. Transfer your frosting to a piping bag. To decorate the top shells, I've melted some white chocolate and I'm going to color it with some pink powder food coloring. Then place the white chocolate in a piping bag and snip the end with scissors. Drizzle a little bit of chocolate on each heart and then top with sprinkles. Now we're going to place a piece of brownie in the center of each macaron. It's important to make sure that the brownie is not too tall. You may have to slice it in half crosswise. Pipe frosting around the edges of the macaron, securing the brownie in the middle. And then top with a decorated shell. And that's it, these macarons are absolutely amazing. They were so fun to make, I hope you enjoyed today's video. For the full recipe, for instructions and for the template, you can go to my blog, paisantacos.com. I'm going to put a link down below in the description box. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!